Hello again, this is Vire. Welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls. Um, we're here in the depths. Uh, I didn't pay attention to my video recording time last time, so let's see, it's 5.43 right now. Got a 30 minute limit, so it should be 6.13 when the video stops. This time I've got it, I swear. <laughs> do a proper outro? Maybe. Uh, let's see. See those things on the ceiling? Yeah. They're jerks. Okay. But they're weak to fire. I don't think I can quite lob that high enough. Yeah, so... What you want to do... Is run through, they'll all drop down. Yeah, they're weak to fire. And as far as I can tell, as to what these blobs are... So, at the upper portion of the depths, you know, you are in that kitchen where you found that pyromancer. And... You know, they, they're cannibals up there. They were, they were eating other undead. They were going to eat Laurentius. That's his name. Spoiler, minor spoiler there, I guess. Um, so I figure these piles of blobby sludge are probably undeads that were eaten and then passed as fecal matter. And since, you know, the flesh is undying here, uh, they weren't actually dead. You know, they sort of reconglomerated into amorphous blobs, seeking nourishment through whatever means they can find. It's probably not the real lore on them, but, you know. I'm going to go all the way through the depths. I'll probably kill the boss. Go ahead and kill the boss. Just to get a bunch of souls. And, uh... What else? Uh... Oh, words. Then I'll head back to Firelink Shrine, because... Pyromancer will move back there, and then we'll have access to Pyromancies. And he sells some pretty good Pyromancies. They're elementary Pyromancies. And they'll be useful in an upcoming area. Get rid of the source of that buff. These big rats, don't underestimate them. They will mess you up. Especially if they're still rocking the channeler's attack buff. Nice. Humanity. Also, fun fact. That down there is going to be the boss arena. And if you didn't come through that fog gate, or through the other door over there, and kill this channeler, he'd move out onto the ledge and shoot at you with soul arrows. And unlike the player, 
his soul arrows don't have a distance limit. down the hole. If you fall down the hole, you'll wind up in a room with a creature called a basilisk, and it has a high chance of cursing you. So, don't want to do that. Also, I recommend to come through here while being human. Hey, speak of the devil. There's a basilisk now. That gray fog, that'll curse you. This is the reason you should come in through here while you're human. Get to beat up on Dark Wraith Kirk. He gives a lot of souls. Gives you a humanity. And he's a chance to drop one of his, his gear pieces. Either his sword or his shield. Or both. His sword is actually one of my favorite weapons. Um... It's a straight sword and it causes bleed. It's not amazing in this game, it is pretty good. But it's really good in Dark Souls 3. So you can set that sucker up. Do poison and bleed. You can set it up to do, you know. Best way to deal with these guys, get your strongest weapon out and kill them in a single hit. Yeah. If you don't, they'll breathe on you, you'll get cursed. You don't want that. I don't know why their gas bladders don't rupture when you kill them. I guess Prom was being nice. My first playthrough, I fell down one of the holes. The very first basilisk that I saw jumped, sprayed me with the gray gas. I had zero humanity and zero curse resistance on my gear. I instantly was cursed. When you get cursed, you instantly die. It's not a good time. Ring of the Evil Eye. That's kind of an interesting ring. Uh, whenever you wear it, when you get a kill, you get HP back. Like a little bit of HP back, not a whole lot. But it can be something nice that can keep you going uh, in an area where you might not otherwise make it. So, it can be nice. I don't really need the poise right now, so I suppose I could show it off. There'll be a few more things for me to kill around here. Although I think I've taken care of all the basilisks. And uh, as any Souls veteran knows, the googly looking eyes, which if you notice, those are the eyes of death. Those aren't actually eyes. Those are um, uh, imitation eyes. Their actual mouth and eyes are small and really close together, just under the eyes and just above their, you know, their expanding throat. Like, uh... See that, that little yellow eye there? That's their actual eye. A really freaky creature, and, and they freak me out every time I play this game for like the first five playthroughs. Like, I hate those things. Nothing really faces me anymore, but I still don't like basilisks.
See, my health jumped up a little bit after I killed him. When anything grabs you like this, just start mashing your triggers, mashing your circle button. You'll get out of it sooner. These blob things, they have a uh, chance to drop large titanite shards and green titanite shards. So if you want to, you can just sit here and farm. Hi, shall I? And good day to you. I'm Don on the Xena. I'm just a peddler of sorts. I adore trinkets and oddities, so I trade for them. He sells gold pine resin. He sells three of them. He also sells these unique crystal weapons. Um, they can't be reinforced. They also can't be repaired. I, I don't think they will even... I don't think they'll be repaired by the repair spell, but I've never really bought them to figure it out. They have really high base damage and, and decent scaling. Their only downside is, is they can't be upgraded. That's it. A fully crystallized greatsword. How such a weapon was created is entirely unknown. The crystallization boosts its attack, but makes the blade brittle. The sword cannot be used for long, as it cannot be, be repaired. See, these crystal weapons that he has, they're essentially for people who just didn't understand the point of blacksmiths. And didn't luck out and get a black knight weapon, and you know, just didn't find any of the, you know, the stuff. This is basically the game trying to give you a baseline weapon that's going to be good enough to really deal some decent damage to bosses. And this shield right here is actually a really good shield. Uh, it's a little bit heavy, but I mean, it, it's got 60 stability right off the bat. And then look at those, those damage reductions. 100%, 60% magic, and then 80% on both fire and lightning. This is basically the equivalent of a crest shield for fire and lightning, and then it's almost as good as the actual crest shield for, for magic. It's, it's actually pretty good. Um, but they're not really worth it since they can't be upgraded. But, I mean, if you don't got anything better, you might as well. Hmm. Well, I'm certain we will make a good trade eventually, so I am willing to share some tips. If you see kindling in the catacombs, use divine weapons. That will repair the reassembling skeletons. Already been there, done that, bro. Thank you. That was a fine trade. I have this funny feeling we'll meet again soon. And we'll make another fine trade, of course. He also sells his gear set, and it also I can't be. It also can't be upgraded. Uh, it has some poise, like it has the same amount of poise. The body has the same amount of poise as the elite knight armor. It also is one of the few sets in the game that has curse resistance. Um, the gloves and pants have way less poise than uh, the you know the elite knight set, but they're relatively you know lightweight. Uh, the body is actually unusually heavy. Uh, strange armor from the ancient land of Xena, birthplace of the curious dealer Domnal. The many metals are believed to symbolize glory. And he's got the Helm of the Wise. Actually, I like the Helm of the Wise. It's, it's a little weird because it's got like spectacles built onto the front and horns. But it's got eight poise, which is as much as, you know, the Elite Knight helmet. And then it's got curse resistance. So, you know, it's pretty nice. But again, this set can't be upgraded, so it's not really that good. Well, that is a shame, but no matter. No, not to worry. Come back again. I'm always available. There'll be more in store for us. Someday. Sometime. Ah, oh, what an optimistic guy. As you can see, if you make him stand up, he has the... He uses the crystal straight sword and the shield. And you could kill him if you want to. Uh, I don't know what you would get. I've never killed him, because I like him. His greeting is... I, I think his greeting is Welsh. Uh, I, I shall may, and it, um, it, it's like, hello friend, I think. 
it's been a while since I looked it up. But he's one of my my favorite guys, and it's I'm kind of sad he doesn't make a uh, another appearance in like you know Dark Souls 2 or Dark Souls 3. Um, but ah oh well. Let's look at him in first person. He's got like a dagger there. His medals. Well, let's look at his medals. I've never looked at his medals, really. Let's see. One's got a woman's face on it. Uh, gold, 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 gold. Big looking Incan sort of looking face. It's like a bronze one with like a bird or a typewriter? Or I don't know. Uh. Took some trophies on one. There's another woman. That actually looks kind of like one of the rings in uh, Dark Souls 3. One of the stat enhancing rings, like the knight ring or the priest ring. Let's see. And then there's one with like a lantern. It's got one with the. It's got like a Ferris wheel. Uh, that one looks like it has two people helping each other out on it. Is. It's like a Vitruvian man that's like upside down on his uh, waist cloth there. Huh. Isn't he an interesting guy? Got any of those left, so Couple of summon signs. A heavy crossbow. I never really made use of the crossbows in this one, or or any of the other ones, really. Ah, we can summon Low Trek. Maybe he is a good guy after all. Why doesn't he clean his armor off, though? Does he like being covered in blood? Also, I kind of find it weird. They call all these guys that come to Lordran wearing, you know, plate mail. They call them knights, but none of them got horses. And, and part of being a knight in real life is learning how to ride a horse and do battle from, you know, a mounted position. But ah well. Now for this boss, we're gonna want the gold pine resin. Like a little Komodo dragon. He's got some spikes coming out of his neck. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Not so little. He's got like purple scales. Six legs. Oh god, it's vagina dentata. Someone had a girlfriend with the STDs. Now, like most dragons, if you do enough damage to his tail, you'll cut it off and he won't be able to slap you with it. And you get a Dragon King Great Axe for your efforts.
Oh yeah, he buked. If you touch that, it corrodes your durability. So if you bought like a crystal sword, your crystal sword would probably either be near broken or broke if you touched by it. I wish Solaire would throw lightning at him. He's puking again. Solaire's gonna die. And unlike the original version of the game, I can't heal him by drinking an Estus. That's how healing worked for co-opers in the original version. You just, even if you're at full health, you could drink and everyone that was with you would. Okay, we got him. Oh no, still there! Still there, why? Oh man. I don't get the sunlight medal for that one. See, that's the actual challenge when you summon an NPC in this game, is actually killing the boss before the NPC dies. Now, I could have, I, I probably could have just, you know, I, I spent more time talking and observing it. I don't know, I just, I like to, you know, like, the bosses, they, on new game, they die so fast that it's just sort of, you know, like, you know, you need to really upgrade your weapons. It's ridiculous. Like, if I'd wanted to, like, as soon as I got that raw ember, I could have left and come back with a plus 10 club or a plus 10 whatever, you know. But I didn't. Now, we got some things. Like, we've got the Blight Town Key. Key to Blight Town from the depths of the Undead Berg, swallowed by the Gaping Dragon. As its name suggests, Blight Town is a place of great pestilence. Even the polluted inhabitants of the depths are aware of its dangers and built this mighty door in hopes that they could remain safely separated. Mm. Well, we'll go do that in a moment. I do want to go back, and I do want to do some upgrading and some buying. Ma mainly some buying. I want to buy pyromancy from uh, the fellow that we saved. Also, we got a Dragon King Great Axe. It's really strong, but 50 strength to wield it. So at a minimum. Uh, with two hands, you need 34 strength to, 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 to wield it with both hands. This axe, one of the rare dragon weapons, is formed by the tail of the Gaping Dragon, a distant, deformed descendant of the Everlasting Dragons. The axe is imbued with a mystical power to be released when held with both hands. It's basically like a larger form of Wrath of the Gods. It's pretty cool. There's a lot of PvP montage videos with it, too. You know, like Twinks and like started as the bandit level 20 times using only strength. Get that, you know, go go to the Belfry Gargoyles and just, you know, invade, do the track wave, they die, repeat. I've never actually seen anyone use it on me, though. When I get invaded, it's usually somebody with a, you know, like a gold tracer or a silver tracer. Usually the gold tracer. I think that's the one that causes bleed. Like dark flame, dark bead, um, you know, all that stuff that's basically capable of one-shotting.
got about five minutes left on the recording. So we should have enough time to get back to Firelink and buy the Pyromantis. Now what's kind of a shame is they got magic weapon in this game and there's a couple of miracles that can buff your weapon. Um, it's like lightning and uh, there's one that does like magic. But the only way to buff your weapon with fire damage is to either turn it into a flame weapon at that like skeletal giant dwarf in the catacombs or use a fire resin. There's no... There's no fire enchantment in this game, and it's kind of sad, because fire's really cool. Body's really ragdoll in this remaster. I mean, they always really ragdoll, but... This seems especially bad. It's really so you don't get stuck on them. Oh, hello. Well, you certainly are keeping at it. Myself, I'm fine. But you don't tell me anything anymore, I guy. wish to do what I can to locate Master Logan. I am aware of my shortcomings, but I cannot very well just sit around here and rot. Oh, do not worry. I have considered our relationship. I will only leave after I have taught you all the sorceries that I know. I shall count myself lucky if I manage to locate Logan. Or even return here in one piece. Damn it, Amrak. Goodbye, Just then. Do stay safe. Stay here and, and wait. I'll save your damn Logan at some point. Come on, man. Well, I see you made it out. Yeah, I, I made it out safely, too. I have my Pyromancy of the Great Swamp, so I can usually manage with a bit of care. Oh, yeah. By the way, uh, I can share my spells with you. I think you have a knack for it. All you need are the materials. I'll be pleased to help you. Ah, and unless you find the magic unsavory. No, man, I love magic. Yeah, wonderful. I'm sure that you know, they'll be of some use, some assistance. Here, first take this. Ooh. A flame from the Great Swamp. Now you're a fully Ooh, fledged, fledged pyromancer. pyromancer. Well, let's get started right now. I love Laurentius. He is a precious cinnamon roll, too good for this world. Now, your pyromancy flame, unlike your other catalyst, instead of just having to find a better one, you can actually upgrade it. So, just start pouring souls into it. To actually ascend it all the way as high as it could possibly go, uh, right now, you can just farm the souls, and you can get all the way to plus 15 on a pyromancy flame. After that, you have to find another better pyromancer, and she, uh, yeah, spoiler alert, it's a woman, she can upgrade it into an ascended pyromancy flame, and then upgrade it to an ascended pyromancy flame plus five. And the amount of souls it takes to go from a base pyromancy flame to the ascended pyromancy flame is roughly the same amount of souls it takes to go from level one to level 55 on your actual soul level. So anyone who's actually using a fully ascended pyromancy flame, even if they're use even if they're doing a soul level 1 playthrough, they're essentially using a damage device that has 55 levels on it. Like <laughs> So, you know, it's kind of uh, upgrades to equipment in this game are act they out they outweigh your soul level by leaps and bounds. Pyromancy is the art of casting fire. Produce flame, then channel it. Just as our ancestors did. A pyromancer must be in tune with nature herself. My home, the Great Swamp, is an abundant store of nature. You will understand one day. It only takes time. Pyromancy has a, well, rather primitive aspect to it. It messes poor